we've been in a series, and it's the three-part series called The Fight. And I have certainly had some fun uh, putting together some videos. And uh, I know the last one was online. It was, I think it was uh, just in, since Friday. Uh, but we're going to end that series today. This is part three. We're going to end that. Remember, next week we start our At the Movie series. Um, and, and the subtitle for the fight today is that the, the fight is spiritual. The fight is spiritual. It's going to come from Ephesians chapter 5. And we've been looking at some fighting legends, boxing mostly legends. We, we looked at Muhammad Ali and George Foreman and uh, Buster Douglas who beat Mike Tyson uh, and, and uh, Ronda Rousey even in, in uh, MMA fighting. But there's another type of fighting that I think some of us might in, enjoy. Um, and I, I, I don't even, I'm not, I haven't been in it for a while or watching it for a while, but when my kids were younger, this was really something, and they may have changed the name, but WWE, has it changed? You know, we'll, you know it, it, it's wrestling, professional wrestling, and, and we, we've gone to the Civic Center to see that, and so I'm going to put a, a couple of pictures, like, you tell me who these, who's these people are, who's the first person here? Hulk Hogan, all right. So that's going back a few years, by the way. Uh, how about another one? <laughs> and my wife's like, I can't believe I know that. That's it. <laughs> that was one of my favorites was The Undertaker. He was he's, he's, uh, pretty cool. My boys liked a guy named Rey Mysterio. For a, but here, here's one that's been, he's still, he's still doing it, I think. The next one. John Cena, and, and, and in one of the times we went to the Civic Center, he came out, his entrance came out through the audience, and he literally was like right there. Uh, I could have touched it, but I didn't. Uh, but <laughs> uh, John Cena, all right? And, and there's something fun about wrestling and that type of thing because, you know, they, just, they do crazy things. They hit each other with two-by-fours or over the head with a chair, you know, they do this stuff here, and, 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 and I guess we enjoy watching people get hit. It's like, it's like the Three Stooges, okay? It's like, uh, you know, um, and, and boy, are they, they acrobatic. They can, they, look at this. They can just do all kinds of flips and land, and, um, and they do get hurt. But I, I need to be the ambassador of truth about WWE this morning. It's not real. <laughs> I know it's like, well, I, I can't say that. There's kids here. So it's like <laughs> telling you something that uh, you thought was true and is not. Um, it's not real. There is caref careful choreography that goes into this. It is rehearsed. It's not real. Now, I wouldn't say that to one of them because they get offended at that, and then they get real, you know, <laughs> and, and, and w w with you. Um, but in this series, we've been talking about the fight, and it is so, so different than WWE because the fight that you and I experience every day, it is so real, right? It, it is so very real and so different than, than what we see on TV or uh, when it comes to that type of wrestling. So Paul, in, in Scripture, tells us that our struggle, our everyday struggle is actually, it may seem circumstantial, it may seem like it's the people we want to blame, but it's really spiritual. It's a spiritual battle. So he says in Ephesians 6, 12, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. See, that's, that's the physical, the circumstantial. But against the rulers, the authorities, the powers of this dark world, against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. This, this battle that we fight takes place in your soul. And it's a spiritual one. Okay? Because we are primarily spiritual creatures. See, the real you is, is not what's sitting in here today or watching us online. The real you is your soul. The real you is your spirit. That is what is eternal. The body is not, right? We are primarily spiritual creatures. That's the real you. And if you don't understand that this is a spiritual battle for your soul, 
you're never going to be satisfied in this life. Because we always want more, don't we? We always want more. Um, there are so many people trying to fill their lives with something to give them meaning, something they think will satisfy the soul. I mean, even as kids, right? You ask a five-year-old how old they are. They're not five. I'm five and a half. I'm five and a half because I'm reaching for something that's out there, right? One person in Illinois went over a billion dollars Friday night. And I, and, and, and I know this is the struggle because we all think, boy, wouldn't that be nice? Can I be honest? You, you ever watch the shows about people that win the lottery and how it destroys their life? Um, See, we think these things will be what I need, and, 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 but it's not taking care of my soul. A billion dollars isn't going to buy my soul, right? There's an enemy who is working to discourage you, to discourage the work of God in your life. The struggle's not against flesh and blood. There's a spiritual battle, and the devil wants to take you out. Satan wants to take you out. Jesus put it this way. It's in, in uh, John 10.10. 10. The thief, Satan, comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. It's Jesus that offers us life. And once we realize that, we've got a chance. And if we don't realize that, the enemy is just going to drag us down and, and God wants us to win. He wants us to win. So the first part of Ephesians, Paul says, every spiritual blessing that Christ has, think about this, every spiritual blessing that Jesus has, God actually gives to you, graciously and freely. And he wants us to fight like a champion. He wants us not to fight to have the victory. He wants us to fight from victory, the victory he's already won, to move forward confidently. And you may be facing a battle right now, right? Maybe it's of your own choosing even. But God says he wants to help you fight through the mess. So I'm going to pause just for a moment, because I haven't done this in almost, I'm guessing, two years. But there's a song that I heard a while back and I want to just take a pause in this message or make this song a part of the message. I want to sing a song for you. Um, God fights for me. Right? Hey. I stumbled into the room. I was just a shepherd boy without a shield, without a sword. Fed up with the giant's voice, screaming curses to the Lord. I walked down that hill alone with a pocket full of river stones. But what that Philistine couldn't see is that what I had was more than me. See, on my own, I'm weak. for me. I was a servant to the king, interpreting his crazy dreams. But I won't worship mortal man, so they threw me in the lion's den. Vicious teeth were all I saw something came and shut their jaws you couldn't find a scratch on me in fact that night I fell asleep when morning came it shocked them all cuz my God fights for me yes he does I stumbled into the room with alabaster and my wounds I could feel their judging eyes as I knelt before the Christ 
I poured my oil upon his feet And I didn't care who saw me weep I gave him all I had that day And he should have sent me on my way But instead, he lifted up my head Cause my God fights for me oh. He's my sheep He's my sword, the victory's the Lord's. He's my shield, he's my sword, the victory's the Lord's. So what's your story here today? Is there a giant in your way? Are you trapped and can't get out? Are you staring down the lion's mouth? Can you stand before the Lord? Or do you need to hit the floor? It don't matter what you've done, no. Cause the battle is already won. So lift your voice with me and sing. So lift your voice in victory, cause my God fights for me. <laughs> oh yeah. Couldn't think of a more perfect song to go along with this series. So what I want to do is just briefly uh, give you a couple of practical points, a few practical points that Paul talks about to win the fight. Because one of the things we got to realize that what we face is a spiritual battle, but it's it, it's evidenced practically. Okay, that, that we're all it's all connected. What we see around us, what we do, it's all connected. We're all connected to, together. I mean, you, you, don't, you don't fight a spiritual battle, but the physical part is just ignored. Sometimes it's what we do physically that answers that, right? So it is a spiritual battle, but I want us to begin understanding that what we see around us, what we do, it's all connected, right? We fight it practically. We're all connected. Spiritual life and how you treat your spouse, for instance, or how you, uh, how you live at work, right? It's all interconnected. You, know, you, you cannot come to worship this morning and raise your hands and go, well, I am who you say I am, and then go here and live like you're not who he says you are. Okay? It doesn't work that way. There's a connection. And so I'm going to read this passage from Ephesians chapter 6. What I do need to do is Paul uses language here that we're going to misunderstand. Uh, uh, we, we, have the, we have the ability to misunderstand this. That's all I'm saying. Because he, he uses the word slave. And when we use that word, we immediately think of what happened uh, in our nation, which was absolutely horrible and, and terrible and shouldn't have happened. But when Paul's talking about slavery, he's actually talking about this indentured uh, place where people put themselves under somebody because they had some needs, they had bills to pay, they had food, and, and it actually is a whole lot more like work, the way we understand work, than the way we understand slavery, all right? So he begins in Ephesians chapter 6 with verse 1, children, obey your parents, in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and you may enjoy long life on earth, because otherwise your parents will kill you. No, I didn't, <laughs> doesn't say that. I know as, as speaking, it just hit me as a parent. That was, you know, sorry. 
Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and the instruction of the Lord. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Obey them not only to win their favor when their eye is on you, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Serve wholeheartedly, as if you were serving the Lord, not people. Because you know that the Lord will reward each one for whatever good they do, whether they are slave or free. And masters, you treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them, since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven. And there is no favoritism with him. All right? So four little pieces of advice for living practical faith and fighting the fight. One, fight like a slave. Two, fight like a boss. Three, fight like a child. And fourth, fight like a parent. Okay? Fight like a slave. We spend about 54%, someone has said, of our waking adult life at work. Right? Many times, isn't it, you know, we, we just, there's a lot of people that just want to get through this life and retire so that now I can enjoy life. Right? We, we look forward to that. I don't have to, to work anymore. But if you're working, if you're a person who, at this point, I'm speaking to those who uh, are working, Paul says, serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people. So here's the, here's the change of thinking that has to become a part of us who are believers. View your work as a blessing from God and as an opportunity to worship Him. View your work with the understanding that you are actually working for God, not your employer. That changes the motive, by the way, of why you go to work and how you work. Right? Because, because how you work, those of us followers of Jesus, right? How you work can turn people to God or actually away from God. We are made to work, by the way. We're made in the image of God, who is the worker. So it's good to be satisfied with a good day's work, right? It's not something to be endured. Believe it or not, it's something to be enjoyed. So you work to honor and serve God. Thank God that you can work, by the way, right? And God wants us to give it his, our best. Our, remember, our spiritual life and our practical life are connected. But also, he tells us to fight like a boss. So some of you own businesses. Maybe it's, maybe it's you. And masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them since you know that <laughs> he's your boss too. Okay? You have the opportunity to worship God by the way you actually run your business to be kind and honest and fair and generous so that you do that well. Maybe you're in middle management. Now you're, you're sandwiched. All right? You need to honor the owner or your boss, but at the same time, you are leading employees that work for you. And, and that's an opportunity to worship when you do it a way that honors God, that you honor and serve and point people to the one who is leading you. Jesus. You know, it, 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 it goes back to that parable that I just mentioned earlier in our prayer, you know. But God, when we fed the hungry, where, where were you? Well, you're doing it for me. It's the same in our work, right? Whether, whether we are the lowest person on the totem pole or we're the highest, it's all the same with the same boss, right? Thirdly, fight like a kid. No, I'm not sure. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Honor your mother and father. <laughs> so, all of you young people here, 
So be on down. Now, for younger people, if you're still living at home, when you're a child, you live under your parents' roof, you obey your parents. Right? And, I, and I love this because God is saying, kids, what you do matters because you matter. You do. You're not too young to live for God. See? Even Paul, it was a young pastor, uh, Timothy was a young pastor. Paul is, is, is speaking to him, and he says, listen, don't let anyone look down on you because you're young. But set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. So for our young people, following Jesus in your life right now actually looks a lot like obeying your mother and father. That, that's the practical way that lives out. You can honor God as you obey and honor your parents. Now, when we're young, we obey our parents. When we get older and become adults, we move away from obeying and move into honoring. Did you, you hear that? There's a, there's a transition that goes on there. Respect. Right? You now, younger, uh, you're, you're an adult now. You're not a young kid it's not about obedience as much as it is about honoring. And so you involve your parents in your life and be involved in theirs. And if there's a need to take care of them, you do. Uh, God's gift of family is precious and to be appreciated. Now, I'm going to have my kids listen to this because I'm getting older and my wife's getting older and they need to take care of us. And we have to train them up in the way that they should go, right? Not nah, joking, but it's... But we, we, we fight like a kid by honoring and respecting. Again, okay? spiritual battles take place in the practical parts of our life. And the final one is fight like a dad, or actually fight like a parent. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Do not frustrate your kids. Don't make life intentionally difficult difficult for your kids. I've heard, heard too many horror stories, unfortunately. Um, frustration can happen in, in a couple of ways, parents. One is overbearing, overdoing leadership in their lives, where you're, con you're just controlling every little thing that goes on. Or you can overdo discipline, by the way, over the top where you just crush their spirit. Be engaged, but don't overdo it in a way that's not healthy, right? But also, you can't underdo it. So this is the tough part, because you've got to know your kids. They're all different, and you lead them different ways. Don't underdo your leadership in their lives, because, and I just had this conversation with a friend of mine from, from uh, Karate. He's, he's a new parent, young, young daughter, talking about parenting. And it's, it's this whole thing of, you know, he says, he says to her, I am not your friend. You get too many parents who want to be their kids' friends, but if they have plenty of friends, they only have you as parents. And if you're not going to parent them, who does? We've got our schools trying to parent our kids. We've got a, um, other people trying to parent our kids. It's your job. It's your God-given job to parent your kids, not to be their friend, because sometimes a kid hears, needs to hear you say, no. Right? So one of the movies we'll be watching, actually, in, in the at the movie series is called, I, I think it's called Yes Day. Anybody seen that? Jennifer Gardner? This is where the parents and the kids come up with this crazy deal that I would have never given into. Uh, you have to say only yes for one whole day. So I don't know how that's going to turn out. It's probably going to turn out badly. Um, and, and it's kind of a fun film, by the way. It's, a fun, it's not like that really happened. It's a fun film. Uh, but I'll go, you'll hear me say this again because it was one of the lessons as my wife talked to somebody from here uh, that she looked up to. It was a Joanne Roberts, actually, is parenting, who came up and said, listen, here's the deal. Say yes as often as you can, and when you say no, mean it. What good advice, right? And that's what Paul's talking about here. That's what God is telling us. Train them up in the instructions of the Lord, by the way. Talk to your kids about God. 
Talk to your kids about what you're learning and about what God is teaching you. Ask them what they learned in church. Pray with them about life, not just over food. Okay? Be real, be honest. Be honest when you miss the mark. Because you're going to fail. You're going to fail your kids. Be honest when you do. Ask, actually ask your kids for their forgiveness. Do you understand what you're teaching them at that moment? This will help develop your kids into people who are real with God, not hypocrites. Winning the fight means being authentic in your faith. Because if it's not, it's just good words, just good teachings. But faith, faith isn't something that's only there when life is easy. When I agree with it, then it's easy to follow God, right? Can I tell you when you know you're in the ring? You're in the ring for the real fight? When following Jesus is hard. Thank you for the victory that you give us in Jesus Christ. Jesus, thank you so much for already paying the price we couldn't pay on that cross for our sins. So Lord, we're not fighting out of defeat. You've already won our salvation. And, and as followers of you, Lord, just help us. I, I thank you for the passage that says every time we're tempted, you give us a way out, the victory. So Lord, help us day by day. When, when it gets hard, because in, in honest God, it, in, in, especially in this culture, there are days it is hard. It's getting harder, Lord, to live for you. And it's a battle. And, and, and God, we need your strength. Fight for us. Fight in us for you. And for that victory, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.